Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video I will be talking about modifications of root. There are two major types of root, tap root and adventitious root. The tap root, it modifies for food storage. In this we will have fusiform root, conical root and napiform root. Sometimes the tap root modifies for respiration. In this we have rhizophora. To be very much specific, it is mangroves. Adventitious roots, the first we modified for food storage. So we have simple tuberous root and fasciculated tuberous root. Second, there is modification of adventitious root for mechanical support. That support is prop root, stilt root and climbing root. We have modification for special function. So in special functions, we are going to have the epiphytic root and the sucking root. Sucking root are also called as hostoria. Let us study the modifications of these roots. So first of all, we will talk about modification of tap root. It is for food storage. So when I say here the primary root is going to swell up so as to store food. Secondary and tertiary root will remain thin and small. In modification, hypocotyl also joins the tap root. Stem is reduced and disc shape in the beginning. Let's see all the types for food storage. First we have fusiform. When I use this word fusiform, it means it is spindle shape. The upper end and the lower end is fused and the middle end is swollen. So here the example that we have is radish. Radish is the fusiform root. Here they have fleshy tap root which is spindle shaped. Spindle means upper and lower end will be tapered and the middle will be swollen. When we talk about fusiform example is radish and the scientific name that you need to remember is raffanus sativus. Raffanus sativus is the scientific name or binomial name for radish. Conical root as the name suggests it will be of cone shaped. So here the example that we have is carrot. This disc like structure that you can see green one is the stem. So stem in root of radish or carrot is very small reduced disc shaped. Here the base is broad and the apex is narrow. The scientific name for conical root carrot is Daucus carota. We have the next one that is nappy form root. When I say nappy form it's like a nappy the diaper form root. When we say diaper it is all solid. So look here this solid area is the nappy form where the disc like stem will be there. And above this there will be leaf. So this stem is highly reduced when the roots are modified for food storage. Here they have a fleshy tap root, spherical shape. Now this appears somewhat like this. The example for this is beet root. And remember in nappy form the base is swollen and the apex is narrow. Beet root, scientific name beta vulgaris. So these are the three types of modification for food storage. The next modification is for respiration. Most of the time it has been observed in salty areas. The roots are not able to breathe. So they modify themselves. These are called as pneumatophores. Even they are called as respiratory roots. So in the salty areas or the halophytes we can say the roots come against the gravity. They come above the ground surface. These are the only roots which are negatively geotropic means they move against the gravity and they come above to form pneumatophores. These pneumatophores they are having some conical projections they are called as conical spike and on this spike you are going to get small small openings that is called as lenticels. These lenticels helps in exchange of gases. It is seen only in marshy areas. Whenever we talk about nematophores, we have examples like Rhizophora, Soneratia, Avicennia. So let's see halophytes, plant growing in saline, swamp, marshy area and salty area. Roots do not get air for respiration. As a result, they go against the gravity and they come vertically upward. Means they are negatively geotropic. Conical spikes are seen. And it has pores called as lenticels. And these lenticels are meant for exchange of gases. As a result in salty area, these roots can breathe. Example is Rhizophora, Avicennia, Soneratia, 
heritaria let's see the adventitious root modification here also they modify for food storage for mechanical support and for special function so first we have for food storage we have two types of root here simple tuberous root and fasciculated tuberous root when i say simple tuberous root it means from one root only one root is going to swell up and it will store food like this you can see here so it is simple tuberous root from node only one root swells up example is sweet potato scientific name or binomial name is ipomia batatas roots become swollen there is no definite shape they are always born singly alone so one node one root arises from the node of the stem but in fasciculated root what happens many root swells up to store food and that's why it is called as fasciculated tuberous root it arises from the base of the stem so i can say here in fasciculated the root becomes swollen but cluster of adventitious roots they become thick fleshy to store food they arise from base of the stem and it swells up example for this we have the halia and asparagus these are the examples of fasciculated tuberous root next modification that we have is for mechanical support most of the time it happens that the root of the plant is weak so in order to get main support these roots develop some kind of modifications here we are drawing the diagram of a banyan tree where we can see the prop roots as the branches of this root tree grows horizontally over long distance the prop root develops and these prop roots they are going to provide support so that the branches do not break or they do not fall on each other so we can say for prop root it arises from horizontal branches of tree prop root grows vertically downward towards the soil till it reaches or it penetrates the soil it the secondary growth is seen secondary growth means they show the presence of cambium example is banyan tree binomial name is ficus benga lensis let's talk about still root still root is seen in case of sugarcane in case of maize where the adventitious roots are not that much strong enough to support the length or the weight of the sugarcane they should not fall on each other so from the lower most node what happens the root arises and this root is called as still root still root arises from the base of the node lower most node so still root arises from the lower node of a weak stem it is seen mostly in monocot grows obliquely downward and penetrates the soil still root they will provide only support they are not going to absorb water or mineral it has much folded multiple root cap example is sugarcane maize kevda pandanus the next one is climbing root here the root just takes the support to grow or it moves towards the sunlight the very common example that i have seen here is money plant we all keep money plant in the house where one end is in the bottle with which is filled with water and the root keeps on moving towards the window so roots are produced from the node and here it attaches only for support and starts moving towards the sunlight example is money plant which is called as pothos we have kali mirch that is also called as piper nigrum we have pan it is called as beetle so this is the modification for climbing root next modification is very important it is for special function epiphytic root epi means above phytic means plant this plant grows on the branch of some other plant because they cannot get the sunlight as a result their seeds germinate above the branch of some other tree here you can see here the roots they are green in color these roots of epiphytic plants they are called as epiphytic roots so this is a special kind of adaptation just for survival so the plants which grows on other plant they are called as epiphytic plant and the roots are called as epiphytic roots example we have orchids which is growing on the branch of big tree just to get the sunlight such plants have leaves for photosynthesis roots epiphytic root they have a special tissue called as velamen 
and this velamen is hygroscopic in nature velamen tissues they absorb water from the moisture or the water that is lost by transpiration is taken up and it is given to the leaf for photosynthesis example we have vanda we have dendrobium most important part is velamen tissue sometimes these roots also become green and do photosynthesis so the root which is absorbing water and also doing photosynthesis are called assimilatory roots next we have sucking roots or hostoria sucking root means these are parasitic root the root which is highly specialized and they are very small microscopic so that they can penetrate into the xylem and phloem of the host host means on which it is going to grow so it is developed by some parasites to absorb nourishment there are two types of parasitic plants we have partial parasitic plant and we have total parasite when i say partial parasite it means they will penetrate only in the xylem absorb water and do photosynthesis when i say total parasite their roots will penetrate into the xylem and the phloem it means they will absorb water and food both partial parasite example is viscum album total parasite example is dodder or cascuta this is the diagram for cascuta let's meet in the next video friends thank you very much